Good morning students. Today we are going to discuss the two reaction theory for saline pole machines. In this topic we will be dealing with uh, D axis and Q axis that are the two types of axis in saline pole machine and its corresponding reactants XD and XQ. Then how to determine this value of XD and XQ by using slip test. Then for a saline pole machine how to draw the phasor diagram what is the difference between the phasor diagram in cylindrical pole machine finally we will deal with the power developed in saline pole synchronous generator it is known that in case of non saline pole that is cylindrical type alternators the air gap is uniform so that the reluctance of magnetic path is same in all directions Therefore, the effect of armature reaction can be accounted by using one reactance, that is the synchronous reactance, XS. It is because the value of XS is constant for all directions of the armature flux related to the rotor. However, in a saline pole machine, the air gap is not uniform, that is, the radial length of air gap varies. It is minimum along the polar axis and maximum along the interpolar axis. So that the reluctance of magnetic circuit along the polar axis is much less than the reluctance along the interpolar axis. Because of the lower reluctance along the polar axis, more flux is produced along this axis than along the interpolar axis. Therefore, Reactants due to armature reaction will be different along these two axes. And these are XAD, that is the direct axis reactants due to armature reaction, and XAQ, the quadrature axis reactants due to armature reaction. Consequently, the methods for finding the voltage regulation of cylindrical rotor machines when applied to the saline pole machines give results which are not correct. In case of saline pole machine, regulation is found out by applying another method. And this method is called as Blondel's two reaction theory. According to this theory, two axes are recognized in saline pole machines, namely an axis along the polar axis which is called as the direct axis or D axis and an axis along the interpolar axis called as the quadrature axis or Q axis which is 90 degree electrically displaced from the direct axis. Now the effects of saline poles can be taken into account by resolving the armature current IA into two components ID perpendicular to the excitation voltage E0 and IQ along E0. With each of the components current ID and IQ there is associated a component of synchronous reactants XD and XQ. XD is the direct axis synchronous reactants and XQ is the quadrature axis synchronous reactants. If XL is the armature leakage reactants and is assumed to be constant for direct and quadrature axis, then XD equal to XAD plus XL. Similarly, XQ equal to XAQ plus XL. The direct component of armature MMF acts on the main magnetic circuit of the machine, and the quadrature component has a magnetic circuit largely through the air gaps and the interpolar space. Hence, the quadrature axis synchronous reactance is smaller than the direct component and is less affected by saturation. Therefore, we can say for a saline pole machine, XQ will be always less than XD. But for a non-saline pole machine, that is the cylindrical pole machine, XD is nearly equal to XQ. Now let us talk about how to find the values of XD and XQ using this slip test. The method used to determine XQ and XD, that is the direct and quadrature axis reactance, is called as slip test. So this test is 
carried out in a saline pole machine. And uh, there are some important cautions for conducting this slip test. First one, the slip should be extremely low during experimentation. In case of high slip, that is more than about 5%, the following effects may be observed. First one, Current induced in the damper winding of the alternator will produce an appreciable error. And the second one, induced voltage in the open circuit field may reach a dangerously high value. And second caution is that it should be assured that the induced voltage in open circuit is less than the rating of the voltmeter connected in the circuit. In an alternator, we apply excitation to the field winding and voltage get induced in the armature. But in slip test, a three-phase supply is applied to the armature having voltage less than the rated voltage while the field circuit is kept open. The circuit diagram is shown in the figure. The alternator is run at a speed close to synchronous speed but less than the synchronous value. The three-phase Currents drawn by the armature from a three-phase supply produces a rotating flux. Thus, the armature MMF wave is rotating at a speed known as synchronous speed. Note that the armature is stationary, but the flux and hence the MMF wave produced by the three-phase armature currents is rotating. This is similar to the rotating magnetic field existing in an induction motor. The rotor is made to rotate at a speed less than the synchronous speed. Thus, the armature MMF having synchronous speed moves slowly past the field poles at a slip speed that is ns minus n where n is the actual speed of a rotor in RPM. And this causes an EMF to be induced in the field circuit. When the stator MMF is aligned with the D-axis of field poles, the flux phi D per poles is set up and the effective reactance offered by the alternator is XD. When the stator MMF is aligned with the Q-axis of field poles, then flux phi P, sorry, phi Q per pole is set up and the effective reactance offered by the alternator is XQ. As the air gap is non-uniform, the reactance offered also varies and hence current drawn by the armature also varies cyclically at twice the slip frequency. Now the RMS current is minimum when the machine reactance is XD and it is maximum when the machine reactance is XQ. As the reactance offered varies due to non-uniform air gap, the voltage drop also varies cyclically, hence the terminal voltage also varies cyclically. The voltage at terminals is maximum when the current and various drops are minimum, while voltage at terminals is minimum when current and voltage drops are maximum. Figure shows the waveform of voltage induced in rotor terminal voltage and current drawn by armature. It can be observed that when rotor field is aligned with the armature MMF, its flux linkages are maximum, but the rate of change of flux is zero. Hence, voltage induced in field goes through zero at this instant. This is the position where alternator offers reactants XD. While when the rate of change of flux associated with rotor is maximum, voltage induced in the field goes through its maximum. And this is the position where alternator offers reactance XQ. Therefore, XD we can write it as XD equal to maximum voltage by minimum current and XQ equal to minimum voltage by maximum current. Next we will discuss phasor diagram for saline pole machine. While drawing the phasor diagram, the armature resistance RA is neglected since it is quite small and this diagram is drawn for an unsaturated saline pole generator operating at a lagging power factor say cos phi. Further, 
all values are phase values here v is the terminal voltage per phase which is taken as the reference and e naught is the emf per phase to which the generator is excited now from v we will draw ia at an angle phi that is here in this case we take lagging power factor so ia is lagging the voltage v now ia can be resolved into two components id and iq now from the tip of v we will draw id xd perpendicular to id and from the tip of id xd we will draw iq xq perpendicular to iq now taking the phasor sum that is phasor sum of v id xd and iq xq we will get the e naught that is the emf per phase to which the generator is going to get excited this is the simplest way to draw the phasor diagram for a salient pole machine referring to the phasor diagram we can write iq equal to ia into cos delta plus phi and id equal to ia into sin delta plus phi where delta is called as the power angle which is the angle between v and e naught and phi is the power factor angle therefore e naught equal to v cos delta plus id xd and replacing id with ia sin delta plus phi we can write v cos delta plus ia xd into sin delta plus phi expanding sin delta plus phi we will get the resulting equation number 1 similarly v sin delta equal to iq xq substituting iq equal to ia cos delta plus phi and expanding cos delta plus phi the resulting equation you will get as equation number 2 now we will derive an expression for power developed in saline pole synchronous generator if we neglect armature resistance ra and hence the copper loss then power developed pd by an alternator is equal to the output power that is p out now from the phasor diagram of the saline pole synchronous generator the per phase power output is p out equal to v ia cos phi now ia cos phi we can write it as iq cos delta plus id sin delta also e not equal to v cos delta plus id xd from that id equal to e not minus v cos delta divided by xd similarly v sin delta equal to iq xq from that iq equal to v sin delta by xq therefore pd equal to v into ia cos phi substitute ia cos phi equal to iq cos delta plus id sin delta putting the values of iq and id we will be deriving the expression for power developed in a salient pole synchronous generator as given by the equation number 2 now the total power developed would be three times the given power that is we have found the power for per phase therefore the total power developed would be three times the above power now the following points may be noted if there is no saliency that is if xd equal to xq then equation number two will be changing into pd equal to e naught into v by xd into sin delta per phase this is the power developed by a cylindrical rotor machine now the second time in equation introduces the effect of salient pole it represents the reluctance power that is power due to saliency now if e naught equal to zero that is if there is no excitation then pd equal to v square into xd minus xq divided by 2 xd xq into sin 2 delta per phase and the power obtained with zero excitation is called as reluctance power it should be noted that reluctance power is independent of the excitation